morning, Saints. Thank you, Elder Farmer. Uh, it's a blessing to be here this morning to, to be able to study God's words together. I'm going to ask you, uh, have you registered already? Everybody registered? I know that's something that the superintendent makes sure that uh, we do, that we register. So you know you have your little scan, you have to scan the, uh, the code there. Scan your attendance. Let me see if I get this thing right. He told me to point it there. Am I pointing it right? Or maybe I got it the wrong way. I don't know. I think I got it the right way. Okay. All right. It's, all right, come and help me, somebody. <laughs> all right, I think I, he, he told me to make sure I pointed at the booth, but I'm doing it just like he said. <laughs> Okay, there you go. All right, there you go. Was I doing something wrong? You press this one. No, I pressed that one. Oh, no, I pressed. Oh, okay. I pressed. See, that's why I needed help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I know normally the superintendent has somebody to actually read for us. Is anybody willing to read uh, for me this morning? <clears throat> David? David? Are you willing to read for me this morning? Are you willing to read for me this morning? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a quite interesting lesson that we're dealing with this morning. Uh, something that uh, some of us, you know, we really have to deal with because it's something that's very prevalent in our world today. And a lesson uh, a lot lets us know that. What is our lesson? What is the title of our lesson? Dealing with debt. Okay, yeah, very prevalent. Uh, before we get started, we're going to reverently bow our heads and invite God's presence to be with us, that he might bless us as we study his word together. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we're thankful for the opportunity to be here in your house. We thank you, Lord, for the grace that you've given us and the mercies that you've extended to us. Now we ask in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit come and be the teacher here this morning. Help us as your people, Lord, as we're dealing with this very important topic that touches everybody's life in one way or another. So, Lord, we thank you. We just praise you. We ask your blessings and continue to help each one of us to grow in your grace as well as in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For as in Jesus' name we pray, let us all say, Amen. Our memory text this morning, let's show you. All right, everybody see it? Amen. We're going to read it together. It says, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the servant of the leader, of the lender, excuse me. Why is this? I want you to think this morning, why is this? Why do you think our memory text is saying this to us? That the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is serving to the lender. When we think about in the context of dealing with debt, why is this so important for us to understand? Would you mind using the mic for us so we all can benefit from what you're saying? It seems like it's, it's just like it said, because the poor always have to go to someone to, to borrow or to get, get something on credit, and the lender always there to keep us in debt. Okay. All right. Good point. Anybody else? Anybody else thinking? How is this 
going to help us today. The, Lord, the word of God is here to help us. Amen. And, and if from study of this lesson, it lets us know that this situation and this problem with debt, it not only is prevalent in our, you know, among us as believers, but it's, it's prevalent everywhere, Amen. all over this nation, all over the world, really. Look at that economic situation that we're presently in, in America, outside of, you know, America, but especially here. Who's getting all the money? <laughs> huh? Come on now. Come on, Saints. Y'all got to liven up for me just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the people that keep borrowing, which could classify us as believers, we're servants, aren't we? Right. Servants to the lender. Isn't it true? Amen. Okay, good. All right. Still on the Monday's lesson. David, could you read that for us? People usually go into debt because they have no cash to spend on something. So they borrow some or request a loan. Debt is an old problem. There are stories of people who went into debt in the Old Testament for distinct reasons. Jesus also told parables regarding debt. The Bible contains practical advice on finances. Okay. So we see here that I mean, this is a real problem. If Jesus himself had to deal with it during his time, what about us? Okay. I, um, I believe that one of the reasons we get into debt is because we feel like we deserve things that we can't afford. Okay. Especially if you were raised poor, you know, and deprived, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, as a child. That's just my thinking. Yeah. You know, you, when you get to the place where you start working, you think you deserve all these things, but you really cannot afford it unless you get into debt. Oh, okay. You know. Okay. You, think Good you point. don't deserve it if you can't afford it. Okay. Good point, Sister Wilson. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, Sarah. Just, that, yeah, go to, ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, Brother you. Tisha. Go ahead. May I? Yes, you go ahead. Just to go along with what Sister Wilson said, you know, a lot of the times, especially for people, um, you know, third world countries, I'm from Honduras, and when you're there, you grow up thinking, oh, American dream. One day, I want to go there because there, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a land where, you know, um, I, can, I can buy, I can work, and I can get paid, and buy things, and I can buy my own house my own car and all these things that goes on you you kind of grow thinking that here is a land of opportunity you come over here and next thing you know you're working there's that goal that american dream even not just for people overseas but people here they want to own their own home uh drive a car of the year uh, uh, and do all these things and uh next thing you know you're working uh and the job that you have is probably not enough, and you start getting death and death and more and more. And um, you're having this job, and then you get another job, and some people even three jobs. Next thing you know, there's no time for nothing. Your life goes on, you don't even see what's going on. Just go get up and go to bed, and next day the same thing, and there's no time for the Lord. There's no time for... Uh, prayer anymore and so forth. So this is really an issue that um, affects all of us, not just then, but now, and we have to be careful with that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Allen. Okay, Sister Elsie. You know, the Bible tells us to be content in the state that we're in. I think Satan used debt and our discontentment to 
keep us in sin and in debt because eventually God says that everything that he owns everything if we stay content and that's patient because he he knows what we need he knows the character that he wants to build in us so if we are impatient then we will go out and get debt and the credit card is the worst thing besides you know it's just built on a whole lot of things that will keep us in debt it's good it has its advantages but to not look at the Joneses, to be content in the state that we're in is a way out of it. Okay, thank you. That's a wonderful comment. Okay, good. Okay, uh, Sabbath afternoon. It says, one definition of debt is living today on what you expect to earn in the future. Today, debt seems to be a way of life. But it should not be the norm for Christians. The Bible discouraged debt. Mmm. <laughs> it says <clears throat> in scriptures there are at least 26 references to debt and all are negative. The Bible does not say that it is a sin to borrow money, but it does talk about the bad the often bad consequences of doing so. When considering financial obligation, Paul counseled, render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, custom to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. One owe no one anything. Did you hear that? It says, owe no one anything except to love one another. That's uh, Romans 13, 7, and 8. Why is debt an almost international scourge at every level, personal, corporate, and government? Every society has always had at least a small percentage who were in debt. But, the, but today, a much larger portion of people are in debt, and it's almost never to their benefit. It said, this week we will consider the reasons for debt and how to deal with it. You may be debt free, Amen. but you may be debt free, praise God. <laughs> but you can share this valuable information with family and friends who could benefit from it. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now we understand what that's all about. Sunday's lesson. is going to tell us how about the problem, a little bit more about the problem, and then we're going to get into how God wants us to deal with it. Okay, it says, read Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2, and verse 12. What is God's idea for his children regarding debt? How can they obtain this idea? And through, and through this context, is very different from ours. What principles can we take from this context and apply to our own, to our own now? Can we put dinner already, the 28th chapter, verse 1 and 2 on the screen, and verse 12 also? We want to look at these verses. Do we have our Bibles? All right, praise God, we got our Bibles. So, okay, thank you. David, can you read that for us? Verse 28 and also verse 2 and verse 12, all of it. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, 
to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Wow. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that good? Ain't how good God is? <laughs> all his promises that he gives us, if we just obey the voice of the Lord our God, isn't that simple? It's just simple. Just do what God says, and all these blessings will follow us. Yes. Also, uh, brother teacher, uh, God has already set in system a place our tithing and our offering. And that comes with faith, returning our tithing and our offerings. And he said, when we seek first his kingdom, he said, you know, he, these blessings will be bestowed upon us. He said, seek first his kingdom, and all these things will be given to us. So we have to have that unadulterated faith and trust that God will keep his promise because he's not a man that he should lie. Amen. So if we will follow the system that he has already put in place, and be content, like my sister said earlier, and, you know, follow his will. We will stay out of debt. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very good point. It's a very good point. Very good point. So we see what the problem is. We already heard the solution, truly. If we really want to, you know, get an answer to this debt problem, just follow the voice of the Lord. And his word tells us how we should live, what we should do, you know, he tells us. So where does the problem really lies? Anybody? I'll say it again. With us. Okay, with us. And that's true. Yes, Jackie. The problem lies with us, but there are different reasons why we get into that problem. Some of them is selfishness. We want what we want when we want it. This is a microwave generation now that we want stuff and don't want to wait on it. And also the returning of tithes and offerings, is, is, it can be selfishness. It can be because we are yoked under bondage. And some people can be addicted to drugs and addicted to gambling and addicted to everything. And then they don't have any money left. But the Lord, he's able to break every yoke. Amen. And if we pray over time and if we desire to obey him and to do what he says, he will send the Holy Spirit to help us and get us out of that situation and put us back on the right track. So, yo, so it's, it could be different reasons that we got there, but the Lord is able to solve all problems if we want his help and if we want to do it, I'm sorry, and put us back on the right track. Amen. Yes. So, yeah, amen. Amen. Good answer. Amen. But I'm a realist. What happens if, when God says, the poor will have with us always? Yeah. That's cool. So how do we handle that problem? I think that problem pretty primarily lies with those who are the lenders, not the borrowers. And the reason I'm saying that, and I may be getting ahead of myself in the lesson, but the reason I'm saying that, because oftentimes the lender uses one word that the Bible says about usury. They, in interest rates yep, yep, yep. get higher. And so when your bill comes, you're normally paying, what, maybe $40, $50 a month. All of a sudden, the interest rate went up. It went, now you're paying almost $100 a month. And this in turn keeps causing you to have to come up with more money to pay your bills and you have less money to do take care of some of your other obligations and so that's one way that's only one way to me how a person can end up finding themselves in financial difficulties or in debt because of the lender oftentimes because of the lender go ahead my sister just to comment on uh, what sister uh, Yates just asked she uh, asked uh, what the, uh, the word of God says that the poor will be with, be with us always, and that's true. And uh, uh, we have to um, look at, you know, if we just be content in what we have and follow God's commands, then we will have that extra funds to support the oppressed. Okay. You know? And he expects this out of us. But uh, we also should realize, too, that um, 
Sometimes we um, have to go in debt. For example, you know, our kids' education. But, you know, as I was studying, it also stated that if we go in debt with different things, you know, but try and get out of it as quick as possible. Because right. when we go in debt for our kids' education, hey, they're going to get a decent job, you know, and that's going to help them financially, you know. So uh, it's several ways to look at this uh, debt situation. Okay. All right. Good. Brother, Ye brother uh, I'm sorry, brother. My brother in the back, I can't call you name right now, but I know you are. Hey. Brother Tate, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I take the mic to him, please. Thank you. The poor being with us always, that's because the God wanted those who have a lot more to give to the poor. Mm -hmm. That's why he said the poor would be among us always. And a lot of times we are so selfish that we don't want to do anything. And God, it says, God love a cheerful giver. Amen. Right. And if I have more than I really need, then what about the people that have less? You know, right. so the whole thing is that God want you and I that have more to give to those who have less. Amen. Amen. Great, great. Thank you, brother. And I just want to say a quick comment on Osi's question. Um, you had the widow. Someone's spouse can die. You can um, not have any kin, kin people. You can be on Social Security. You can be on. So we will always have someone who um, is falling below the poverty line, but the Lord gives the church. If we can give extra, we have the poor farm, we have the Dorcas Society, we don't have to go through the church. If you know somebody who is struggling, we can help them. So there will always be poor. The Lord said, uh, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, we are if we are able to financially give. There's other ways we can help our brother out, but if we're able to financially give, give to the church, give to the missions, and yes, the poor will always be with us for some reason or another. Yes, Sister Wilson. Um, I, I believe one of the problems we have is that we forget that God don't bless us to keep, to, 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 so we can spend it all on ourselves. Right. Okay. And I believe that he, um, the poor will always be with us because that keeps us from being selfish. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. You, you understand yeah. what yes, I'm saying? I, definitely I, I do. mean, we wouldn't have. Uh, um, we, would, we wouldn't have to worry about, about giving anybody anything. But I really do believe that talking about this is one thing. But I think God expects us to put things in place so that we can do what he expects us to do. We should, we should not use all our means on ourselves. We should always be in a position where we can help somebody that really need. Right. Really, and if you're not inclined to do that, you don't, God won't waste his time sending those people by you. Right. You understand? Yeah, what I understand. But the minute, you, the minute you understand that and you are willing to do it, then you're the one that he's going to send those people by because he know you're going to help. He don't have no time to waste. Right. This lesson is something we need to learn and live. Right. Okay, good point, very good point. I just wanted to comment. I asked the question. I knew the answer. Okay. <laughs> I, and, and it's selfishness, and, and Brother Tate, all of you brought out the answer. And, that, and it brought me back to the point of what they did in the Bible days. You know, they, they went from place to place. Food was for everybody. Now, levels of poorness will be always. But it's what God is looking at, our motives, and what we do about the poor. And I've got to do better. Pray for me. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Uh, wow. Y'all said a mouthful. That was a mouthful. Really, truly it is because, I mean, the, you have to get to the, the real problem is rooting self out of us, yeah. opening up our own hearts so we can be willing to be willing to give and to support not only God's church, but do and help others. Isn't that what Jesus did? He gave his life for everyone. And so we may not be able to reach, I mean, everybody in the entire world, but what about your neighbor? 
What about, you know, you know, somebody that, like Sister Wilson said, God brought across your path. You know, God looks at what we're doing with what he has given us. And when we do the right thing, we will be blessed. Because he's already promised the blessings. The blessings are ours if we just do what's right. Okay, I think we've talked about sources of debt already. Reflection. It says, read 1 Timothy 6, verse 6 through 9. What is Paul saying here that all of us need, need to heed? What do these words mean to you? And, what, and in what way can you better follow what the word is teaching us here? Would you mind putting 1 Timothy 6, verse 6 through 9 up for us? Okay. Okay. David, could you read that for us? But they that will be rich. I'm sorry. Sir. Okay. Can you go back? Yeah. Go back for us. That's First Timothy 6, verse 6 through 9. Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Verse 7, for we, for, we, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Amen. Verse 8, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. And verse 9, but that they, will, but they that will be rich fall into temptation of a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Thank you. So what can we learn from them, those verses that God has just, we've just read this. Okay, the, the same word keep popping up, doesn't it? Amen. Contentment. Yes, Sister Wilson. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. We understand. Right. Right. Yes. Brother Tate. Yeah, being content is what God <clears throat> allow you to have. Just take it and do with it what you know is right. But, you know, <clears throat> sometimes God won't allow you to have more than you really need. And sometimes the people that are really poor and need something, that's the only way that God will save them. Because a lot of times people have a lot of money, they act the biggest fools in town, would do anything. But the key is obeying and doing what God said do. And what we do, <clears throat> take for instance, God might allow you to have way more in abundance than you need. And you would do just what God would have you to do. But if he allowed me to have it, I might be the craziest person on earth. Okay. So sometimes he allowed things to happen in your life for you to have less in order to save you. Amen. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, money answers all things. So I don't know if 
a lot of us have read it not, but that's what it's saying, money answers all things. The key is be content with what you have, do what you, and I don't think it's probably too many people that don't have a credit card. It ain't saying that they're just really free or not in debt. But all of us going to be in debt one way or another. If we got a house, unless you pay cash for it, unless you got a car, you pay cash for it, you're going to always have some debt. But be wise with it. Right. Take heed with what God said to Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My next lesson, again, reemphasize following godly counsel. Yes, my brother, you got your hand up. Oh, okay. Sister, I, I was just going to comment on verse 9 where it says, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmless desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. You know, when we desire to uh, become rich, and it's nothing wrong with being rich, you know, as long as you use your money, it's the way God has ordained it to be used. But when we uh, desire to be rich and take our eyes off God and try and do it our own way, then we fall into the trap of the devil, you know, and he, he'll keep us focused on that money. And the word of God tells us that the root of all evil is the love of money. So we have to stay focused. Stay right. focused. Okay, good. Because it, it will cause you to lose your soul's salvation. It will. Because he said... Uh, if you love anything more than me, you're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, so true. So true. Uh, I was just thinking, even as you were speaking about, uh, about the, the love of this world and the things that this world can offer you, and oftentimes we do lose our way. I say we lose our way because if we're focusing on this world and this world's goods and having, as someone has already spoken about, having the same thing the Joneses have, or, I mean, we can actually truly lose our way. We focus on these things versus focusing our attention on God and doing his will and not our own. And so, like I said, Monday's lesson talked about following godly counsel. And what does contentment mean? What's another word about for contentment? Have you thought about it? Satisfied? How about just being happy? Can you just be happy for what, you know, what God has blessed you with or what God has blessed someone else with? Just being content, just being happy, being satisfied. Thank you. Now, Monday's lesson. Following God count, godly counsel again. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button, I think. I'm pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> All right. Brother Wooten, can you read that for us, David? We are material beings, and we live in a material world, a world that at times can be very alluring. You'd have to be made of steel and synthetic oil, <laughs> not flesh or blood, not to feel it, not to feel at times the lure of material possessions and the desire for wealth. At one time or another, who hasn't fantasized about being rich or winning the lottery? Though we all face it and there's nothing wrong in and of itself in working hard to earn a good living or even being wealthy, none of us has to succumb to the trap of making idols out of money, wealth, and material possessions. We are promised divine power to stay faithful to what we know is right. This is important because the temptation for wealth and material possessions has led to the ruin of many souls. Amen. Okay. Reflection. What do, what do your choices tell you about how well you deal with the lure of the world? Why is working hard to earn a good living 
not necessarily the same thing as making an idol a wealth of money. How can we learn the difference? Doesn't the Lord want us to work hard for what, what we have? He wants us to work hard. And he wants us to be honest, doesn't he? He wants us to be honest. Yes. But you know, when we, when we have a relationship with God, everything works out okay. Having a relationship with God is that you're doing just what God said to do. And any time that you go against what God is saying to you, that's where your problem come in. He, he says, I love you with an everlasting love. And once we started doing just what God said to do, you don't have any problem. <clears throat> the Bible said, the way of a sinner is hard. And when we do what God said to do, I mean, it's, it, it, it's easy. We can do it. We have to learn how to adapt that. But when you begin a relationship with God, things are much, much more easier than they'll ever be. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Good. Any more comments? Uh, Sister Wilson? I was reading the book of Job last night, you know, and I had to admit that this brother really understands what all of us need to understand. When I read the scripture... Can you put the mic up so everybody can... I'm be sorry. Yeah, yeah. This Thank was... You. This was he was truly wealthy. We don't have anything. He was wealthy. <laughs> and overnight, he lost not only all of his wealth, but his family. Mm -hmm. Then his friends, you know, you know right. what they yes. were doing. Yes. And listen to what he, listen to how he ended this thing. He said, naked, he said, then Joe arose tore his robe and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshiped. And he said, naked, I came in, I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Amen. He really understood that everything in in him belong to God and when we understand that we will not only stop making these bills and, and pay all these high interests you know mm -hmm. all, all our lives trying to be worldly like I'm talking about me now you know I don't know about you but we will set ourselves up to be obedient to the word of God to his counsel so we will have something to share with poor, the, the people that have less than we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Brother Tate. In that, in that first paragraph, yes. it, and it said, what do, you, do, do your, choices. your choice tell you about that? The word in there is choice. Right. Is we, make, we make choices. Yes. What? what I want or what I don't want, what I want to do or what I would not say. So the key is I have a choice and God allow each and every one of us to make choices. And choices is very, very important in any Christian life is when you make a choice to do good or to do bad. Right. Or to give or not give, whichever. Right. Okay, good, good point. All right. You know, Job was rich, and a, a lot of people in the Bible were wealthy. And I think that I should say I must be be careful in being judgmental about people that are uh, uh, wealthier than I am. Right. Because, see, God's going to look at my motive. Just because I went out and bought a Volvo doesn't mean that I don't have godliness you know what I mean right so I should not judge other people but let you God do do the judging amen amen that's right we don't know each other's heart only God knows that's true amen okay now we've talked about dead a lot 
and we've talked about the problem. We, we've seen the solution is, is following God's counsel. Now, how do we, as Sister Wilson mentioned about, how do we take steps? What steps can we take to actually get out of debt? And that's under Tuesday lesson. What are some of the things we should do? Obey. Okay, obey. Obey. Okay, bring that out, Sister Wilson. Give, somebody give it a mic. I wanted to say that loud and clear. Uh, stop making more debt. And if you're a wasteful person who have not been given any thought to, hold, to, to, the, to, the, to the pennies, remember that pennies make, you know, take care of the dollars. Amen. Because if you're wasteful, don't forget that stuff that you wasting. You had to pay for it. That, that food you throwing out, like, right. I know what I'm talking about. Right. You know, uh, you had to pay for that. So if you take care, stop making any more debt and start paying attention to how, how you spend your money and not be wasteful. Okay. That's okay, good. Okay, any other solutions? How do we get out of this debt? That was very good. Anybody else? Also, um, it was uh, uh, talking about in, if you are in debt, and, and probably everybody that's sitting in here is in debt, and it might not be as large as the other person, but we got some debt. Right. But he tells us, you know, to seek his counsel. You've already given us a plan. And in the uh, Sabbath school lesson, which uh, I've already known, that you know you take your debts and you line them up and you put them in order from the smallest to the largest okay and then it suggests that you start at the smallest pay off that smallest debt first and once you pay off that smallest debt the money that you was paying on that smaller debt put it to the second debt that you owe and double it or triple it and you go up the line until you get to the highest debt maybe your house or your car or whatever and then you be faithful in paying that off as swiftly as possible. Amen. It works. I've done it before. I'm do, I do it now. Although I'm not in a lot of debt, I have a little debt, and, but God, you know, he shows us, you know, what to do. So okay. that was a Very. suggestion in the uh, Sabbath school lesson also. Okay, good. Very good. Very good. They're very good. Uh, Vicky, uh, yes. An, another, another way to get out of debt is be faithful and be honest <laughs> from experience, we pay, we pay tithe, but not faithfully. Right. You know, paycheck after paycheck when we get down. <laughs> I'm going to tell all for myself. I have borrowed a <laughs> tithe before, and it seemed like all hell broke loose. <laughs> I paid this week. I might not pay next week. I want to pay this and pay that. I'm just being honest. Right. You right. know. If we do what God said do, we won't be in debt. Is it be faithful and tied and in offering, and God will bless us, man. Right. But uh, a, a lot of us, we might not admit it. You sit up in the hill, you know, like that. But sometimes we borrow the money, right? And you, and we don't pay it back. That uh, has happened to me. Now maybe okay. maybe it never happened to you before, but right. anyway, yeah. be in faithful and tied and in offering. Yeah, I, go ahead, Sister Yates. I, I, you go oh, first, okay. then Deborah's um, going to say her what she has to say. You know, uh, another way is to avoid debt is, is to save. You oh. have a savings account, okay. two savings accounts, three savings accounts. When you have a savings account, you can pay for what you want three-fourths of the way or all of it. And right. I do that. Okay. Good. Okay, Deborah. Okay. So um, for me, what I do personally, um, I used to sell the... Um, the ATM machines, I used to sell them. But um, what I've come to find out, and I was really big on trying to get my credit score up, 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 and it's in pretty good standards now. But I always say that um, debit, I use a debit card to do my, most of my purchases, and I say debit is discipline, because they take that money right off your, right. you know, if you, if you don't have it, you can't get it. Right. So credit is debt, <laughs> and, <laughs> and debit uh, is discipline. Amen. Good point. Good point. I have had to covenant with God. I need God's help to get out of debt. Okay. And that was the first thing that they suggested here in getting out of debt. 
right. you covenant with God that you're not going to make any more debt and right. you're going to, like she says, snowball the ones that you have. And, um, oh, yes. And another thing that I have found in the past that blessed me was doubling up, mm -hmm. you know, when I cut back when I when I cut back on my on my offering, not my tithe, I don't play with that. But when I cut back on my offering, it looked like God cut back on me. Mm. I'm serious. I, I'm okay. serious. You know? right. I think I think that when I think that we can't beat God, given no matter how we try, it's right. been my experience. Right. The more I give, the more He give to me, and the minute something, the minute I get in a situation where I say, well, you know, I'm going to cut back a little bit on this because God didn't say how much you're supposed to give him. Mm -hmm. I start, my money start getting very meager again. Yeah. So I would suggest, you know, to, you know, to, to um, if you can, right. if God impressed you. Right. Honest, yeah. you know, give, give more to God in his cause. Okay, good. Amen. Okay. All right, as we move forward, because I know we got to be getting close to our time here. Uh, talked about how getting out of debt. Uh, look at the reflection again. Let, us con let your conduct be without covetousness. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Look like God to keep talking to us, saints. For he himself has says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. How could applying these words greatly help people avoid getting into debt? You don't even have to respond. I just want you to think about it. Just think about it. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Do you understand what covetousness is? Okay, good. All right, Wednesday lesson. <laughs> Let's talk about sureties and getting rich, getting quick, get, getting rich quick schemes. It says the Bible is very clear that God does not want his children to become responsible for the debt obligation of others. In the book of Proverbs, the Lord has warned us against surety, that is, co-signing or becoming guarantors for another person. How does the saints think about it? What do you think about that? Now, we hear what God said, but what you, what did you, how do you feel about that as a, as a child of God? Do you think the Lord is right on that? Well, I got an example. <laughs> the reason why I said that, because many years ago, when I was just a little bit younger, I have a brother of mine who, um, he was in need of a car. You know how you love your siblings and you want to, you know, want to help them. Now, he was a responsible young man. And, uh, uh, Many of you remember Frida. But Frida was totally against it. She said, no, don't do it. Don't co-sign for this car for this young man. Don't do it. But me, because I love my brother, I co-signed for that car. And as a result, he allowed somebody else to drive it. They had an accident in it. He failed to tell me that the insurance had lapped. And guess who they came after? I was blessed and in, in, in so, in God was merciful to me. Let me just say that. God was merciful to me in the sense that I didn't owe as much as I could have, you know, actually had spent out as a result of uh, co-signing for my brother. But, you know, it was a valuable lesson. Now, I know this text been in this Bible for a long time, and I read the Bible. But for some reason, I didn't, the surety, 
this guarantor. I, did, I missed that. I co-signed, and I, I felt, and I you know, received the results of actually doing that. So it's a valuable lesson to me to learn now that I'm, we're sitting here talking about it again. I was like, Lord, should I say something about that? I said, yes, I need to. <laughs> I need to. Because some of us might go and do the, uh, or doing the very same thing. Yes, go ahead. When, I, when um, I really wanted to get into a house before my kids start school, so I started looking. And when I found the right house, I didn't have a $1,000 down payment. So we, we just asked some friends to, to co-sign for the $1,000. You know, you young, you beginning, you don't have $1,000 anywhere. You right, know, my right. husband was teaching school and I wasn't working. Anyway, they co-signed and we paid for it. I so I have, you know, I know what that's saying, but having been the recipient of a, someone co-signing for me and it all turned out well, I believe, I believe God, um, somebody help me out there. What's the difference? <laughs> Say, what's the had it done for me, right. it worked out, I was so happy. But see, maybe the difference is that the person that did, did it for you, and you were responsible. You were a responsible family, and, and you were able to pay off that obligation of $1,000. So that's not cut and dry. Yeah. That we should be able to help. If you can, you know, in certain situations, and the Holy Spirit impress you, right. you Right. But see, the thing, like I mentioned, I didn't, you know, I didn't have my spouse at the time, didn't have, we were in an agreement with this. Yeah. She was against it. But because of my love for my brother, I went and did it anyway. You see the difference? Yeah. There is a difference. If, you, if everything is in order in your household, and everybody's in agreement with what's going on, then you can receive the blessing. But I wasn't going to receive the blessing because... My spouse at the time was not in agreement with what I was, what I decided to do. Yes, other board. And that's the beauty of not being so heavily in debt that when, you know, people come to you to ask you that, you know, instead of signing, you'll be able to just let them have it. Give it to them, you know, don't let it be a loan or whatever, just let them have it. That's the beauty of keeping yourself from being so heavily in debt. As far as surety, man, I've always been a big believer. Um, and this just me, my personal opinions. You get burned, you get burned by the people that are closest to you. You know, either a family member or a church member. And that's the reason why it's important that if someone comes to you because it has happened um, that you're, you're, you, know, you have managed your money to where you can give to them and not worry about asking for it back. Right. As far as co-signing, I've never been a big believer of being a co-signer. You ask my kids, um, the things that they've acquired, they, they acquired it on their own without me having to sign for it. Well, praise God. Praise God. Yes, sister. Uh, Victor, I, I have two examples. First example was about my child going to school down at Oakwood. I, I know I didn't have money. And the register asked me to, to sign. And you know, well, she'll make money when she get out of school. <laughs> Lord, I put my name on that list. And this child, years later, I have forget all about me signing uh -huh. that loan. Years later, Victor, I had to pay back that loan because my daughter refused to pay it. Oh, Do you hear me? Yes. So I had to pay it back because they, they come out right. as a, as right. the one yes. that's the co-sign. Yes. Right. And then I remember how gracious God was to me. I was working and this young lady came to me. She was a friend 
and she asked me about cosigning, and I was having so much debt myself. I said, I can't cosign for you. She got a security guard to cosign, and do you know that young lady did not pay that debt, and they went after that security guard? Yeah. And I, I just thank God, uh, but, but no, Sister Wilson was a good one that she paid the debt back, and my mother taught me a valuable lesson. I, she would lend money to all of us. She had eight children, and I'm not saying all eight of us borrowed money from Mama, but after a while, she would just say, well, you know, that's okay about the debt. You don't have to pay me back. I didn't know about the seven years release, but my mama did that early in our lives. But it's a bad habit to borrow, and I'm one of the ones that I have borrowed all my life, and it's not a good thing. Yeah, okay. It's not a good thing to be a surety either. Okay, thank you for sharing. Thank you. I know it's gotta be time. Is it getting time for us to close? Okay, okay, it's time for us to get us close. I think we kind of touched bases on, on majority of the lesson. Even on the Thursday lesson, we talked about term limits and borrowing points. I think we touched on all of it, kind of touched on all of that. Uh, <clears throat> if we go to, I'm going to go all the way to, let me get my pointing right, to I think it's Friday's lesson. As we bring it to a close, thank you for your participation this morning, or this afternoon, rather. I, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, say I'm so used to having SAP school early morning. Now, I'm going to read this one because I think it's important. I think we've all made the point on it. It says, if you have not, if you have lent people money, how honest and fair and kind are you in your dealings with them? How would you fare before God when you have the answer, when you have the answer for those dealings? Now, it's just a reflection question, something I want you to think about. You don't have to respond. All right, on the Friday's lesson, it says the three steps process of debt elimination is actually found on one page of Ellen G. White's writing, emphasizing, emphasis has been added to highlight the point. Uh, number one, I guess, it's, I guess I would say number one, it says be determined never to incur another debt. Deny yourself a thousand things rather than ruin run into debt. This has been the curse of your life. Getting into debt, avoid it as you would the smallpox. Man. <laughs> David, could you read the second one for us? Make a solemn covenant with God that by his blessings you will pay your debts and then owe no man anything if you live on porridge and bread. <laughs> Do not falter, be discouraged, or turn back. Deny your taste. Deny the indulgence of appetite. Save your pence and pay your debts. Work them off as fast as possible. When you can stand forth a free man again, owing no man anything, you will have achieved a great victory. Okay, we're going to stop there. Thank you. All right, as we bring it to a close, I want to, uh, someone would like to offer prayer for us? Anybody? The other boy, would you offer prayer for us? <laughs> Thank you. My hand was going up as you called my name. <laughs> Let us bow our hands. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for giving us, you know, so great instructions as to how to live life. Lord, you knew that we needed something more than just being spiritually fed, but we needed detailed information as how to handle money, Lord, because, Lord, a lot of us have seen in our lives how stressful it can be when you don't have enough money to cover everything or how stressful relationships can be with others when 
either you have loaned to them or they have loaned to you and how that relationship has changed because the money hadn't been paid back the way that it should. We thank you so much. Now, Lord, we just ask that the information that you have given us, that we be obedient and abiding by it yes. so that yes. we can have peaceful, happier lives. And, Lord, help us all, Lord, to, to, to not be covered. Yes. and deny ourselves. This world is so materialistic and they make it so easy now for you to get into debt. Yes. Lord, help us to say no to a lot of the things that we want but don't necessarily need. Yes. Continue to bless us as we move forward and help us, Lord, to be better stewards of our finances. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Boyd. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Sabbath School.